Today, I'm going to be making my fully loaded peanut butter chocolate chip cookies. I've kind of been in the baking mood, so I think we're going to start a baking 101 because I love baking so much. I haven't made cookies since Christmas because I made so many, 12, 12 cookies of Christmas that I was so burnt out. And I was thinking the other day, you know what? I love to bake. Like I love to make cookies. I love to make pies, bread. I love to make macarons. So I thought let's start a new series called Baking 101 where we just start by making simple things. And then maybe as we all, cause I'm not, I mean, I'm not like a veteran, a baker, I'm not a chef, but maybe we can learn together. And I thought it would be cool that in between our Baking 101 classes, I could actually do some videos explaining why do we use baking soda? Why do we use baking powder? Why do you put eggs? Why do some things ask for extra egg yolks and some just ask for whites? So I thought I'll learn too. We'll learn together about why we combine some of the ingredients. Maybe we could talk about flavors that you can put together. Um, that'd be cool with our cooking 101 too. Like I know with chicken, you want to use rosemary's wonderful with chicken and but then there's other herbs that are better with beef and stuff. So I don't know, maybe we can do that on the other side too. So welcome to our very first Baking 101 with Mom Bell. And like I said, we're gonna be making our fully loaded peanut butter chocolate chip cookies. And I'm gonna be making, a, I'm gonna be adding a little different ingredients to these. I thought to myself as I'm thinking of it, I'm like, hmm, let's just mix it up a little bit. So let's get going. You can see all my ingredients. So we'll go through the ingredients before we get started. So on the here's cookies. all the ingredients that we're gonna need to make the cookies. I'm actually just gonna be doubling my recipe, but I'm gonna give the, you the recipe for one batch and I'll put that in the comments. So you need baking soda, vanilla, shortening salt, butter, flour. I'm gonna add peanut butter this time. Um, white sugar and brown sugar. And then for your chocolate chips, we're gonna be doing Reese Pieces, Reese chips, Butterfinger chips, milk chocolate chips, and semi-sweet mini chips. And it calls, well, it doesn't call. Um, I actually add vanilla pudding to mine. I don't have any more vanilla pudding. Added it to my grocery list. You should see my pantry. It is really down to nothing. So I'm gonna be doing cheesecake. I mean, it's gonna be creamy because that's why you add the pudding to them is because you want that creaminess in your cookies. And so we're gonna use the um, cheesecake brand, cheesecake flavored jello. And you want the instant jello. You don't want the cook and serve um, one because that's not gonna work. So here's all ingredients. I'm gonna start getting it into my bowls and stuff just because it's gonna make it a little easier when we're making our cookies. So now let's get started. Let's get it started. Now it's time to get started. We're first gonna do the wet ingredients. So I have two thirds cup of butter and two thirds cup of shortening in my bowl. Now remember, I'm gonna be doubling mine. So the first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna cream the shortening and the butter. And this is my Christmas present for my son Noah. It's a wireless or cordless mixer, hand mixer. And I absolutely love it. So we're gonna cream this together. Now we're gonna add a quarter cup of peanut butter. When you're making your cookies, um, make sure you don't over mix. A lot of people will over mix their ingredients and that's when you run into problems. Okay, we're gonna mix in the peanut butter. Already. Now you don't wanna add a lot because we don't wanna get cookies that aren't gonna rise and be nice. So just a quarter cup will be fine. All right. Okay, now we're gonna add in our sugars. So we have one cup of brown sugar and then one cup of white sugar. And we're gonna mix that again. so good. I haven't made cookies in forever. It just feels like it. Just, I need to get back in the kitchen baking. Right. 
I told my Robert that I was going to make cookies and he just shook his head. Because <laughs> he's trying to train for a, a half marathon. <laughs> and now we're going to do two eggs. And then two teaspoons of vanilla. And that's basically all the wet ingredients. So just mix it until the eggs are just mixed in. We're gonna preheat our oven at 350 here in a little bit. Just get those eggs mixed in really good. I'm actually gonna make um, cookies not only for my family this time, but um, the men have a, uh, a work, uh, work Sunday after church, so I thought I'd whip up some cookies for them too. All right, that looks good. Now I'm gonna set this aside and then we're gonna combine all the dry ingredients. I've gotten all the dry ingredients out, so now we're gonna combine the dry ingredients and then we're gonna whisk it and then we're gonna slowly add it to our wet ingredients. So I have three cups of flour. And then one teaspoon of baking soda. One teaspoon of salt and then one package of instant pudding mix. I'm using cheesecake, but I would use vanilla. I don't know, maybe cheesecake will turn out great. You can use cheesecake instead. You can do banana too. You could do banana chocolate chip cookies. All right. There we go. That's all out of there. Now we're gonna whisk. And then we'll slowly add it to the wet ingredients. Wonderful. My kids are coming home. David helped Haley do her eggs, getting the fish in, but it was too windy. So you just want to mix this with your um, mixer until it just becomes wet. It's okay if there's a little flour still. You're going to keep mixing it. It smells so good. Oh my goodness. Now let's add a little more. If you add too much at once, it'll be hard to mix in. And if you miss parts of the wetness and you have all dry, you're gonna have like crumbles at the bottom of your bowl. This thing has super power. Holy cow, this is my favorite. I actually gave my old one to Haley because I'm like, you can have my old one. I love this one so much. I don't know what colors it comes in, but I think it was like, Maybe $60, maybe. I'm not really sure, but I'm telling you guys, it's so worth it. So worth it. I didn't completely charge it before we started, so it's getting close. All right. Let's get the rest of this going. This was my mom's chocolate chip recipe that I used quite a bit, and I just built on it to make it the loaded peanut butter. And that's what I do with a lot of my things. I will add an ingredient or kind of change it up a little bit to make it my own. I love inventing or finding new flavors to put together. Okay, that looks good. <laughs> the battery's dying. Okay, that looks good. All right, I'm gonna clean up my mess and then we're gonna start adding the chocolate chips. I got all my chips ready to go, so we're gonna be using a half a bag of the minis, a half a bag of the Reese chips, a half a bag of the Butterfinger chips, a half a bag of the Reese Pieces, and then probably just a quarter because it's a big bag of the mini milk chocolate, or the milk chocolate. So I doubled mine, so I'm actually gonna be using all the bags and then half of this one. So let's start adding these. Look at, there's a recipe on the back so you can make popcorn. Look at, there's a recipe on the back so you can do popcorn. Butterfinger. There we go. Butterfinger chips. And then the, ooh, my hands are kind of wet. Not able to tear these. 
Oh, there we go. Let's just get scissors. Easiest, just use scissors. My chips. I really like using the mini chips, even when I make my regular ones. Even when I make my regular cookies, I do regular and small, even in my normal ones, because I think it just brings like a little bit of different texture to it. When you have small and big. Now I'm going to mix all this together and then we're going to start putting it in the pan. Okay, got them all mixed up. It smells great. Whew. Okay, now we're going to put them on the pan. I'm actually going to make them a little bigger than I normally do. Um, I usually use a scooper and my mom's like, no, you use an old fashioned tablespoon. And I'm like, okay, mom. And she says, the bigger, the better. So I'm like, okay. So we're gonna get these all put on a pan. I'm gonna preheat my oven to 350. Okay. And we'll get these all put on the pan and then get them in the oven and then look at the beautiful cookies when they're done. all my pans with my cookies on them. Um, I got about 36 cookies on here right now. I still have about this much in the bowl. So when I make them big, it looks like I get about maybe almost three dozen per batch. So I should be getting six dozen here. Um, 12, there's 12 and a dozen. I have about 36 here and then half left. So I got the, um, the oven going. So when you bake your cookies, you, I know a lot of recipes say to bake them at like 375. I personally wouldn't. Um, I find that the tops cook and the bottoms before the centers cook. So I just am very patient. I put my um, temperature on 350 and they'll cook for probably 12 to 18 minutes depending on your stove. You wanna check them. My husband actually is the one that helped me because I just couldn't seem to figure out how to get the cookies. Like I felt like they were overdone or underdone. So my husband's tip is, when the, when the edges start to brown, that tells you that they're almost done. And he says, take them out, take them out. Even if it looks like they're not done, take them out because they still cook on the pan. My husband's a genius. Don't tell him I said that. <laughs> um, so I, so that's my tip to you. Do not overcook your cookies. When they start to turn brown, you want to pull them out. Like if you can see like gooey in the middle, then keep them in a little longer, maybe turn the pan, like flip the pan. But when you start to see them brown, like start to see them brown, not brown, you wanna pull them out when, they, when you start to see them brown because the bottoms will cook and, and leave them in the pan for a second. You don't have to take them off the pan right away. You want them to set because if you take them off the pan too soon, they'll break into pieces. And so if, if I can tell you any tip, it is don't over mix your cookies. Just mix it until it's done. Don't keep mixing, keep mixing. And then make sure you don't overcook them. Did I say, so I meant, over mix, over cook. So I'm gonna get these in the oven. When I'm all done with them, I'll come back and we'll, we're gonna try one. Well, I'm gonna try one. You're gonna watch me try one and I'll tell you if it's amazing. Um, I've never put in peanut butter in the chocolate chip cookies before. This is new, like new with you guys and new me too. So I'll get these in the oven, get them cooking and I'll be- So I finished the cookies. I ended up doing seven batches of cookies. It is almost six o'clock. I made cookies for three hours. I think I, I made about 120 cookies. And as you can see the holes, my kids have already been picking them. They all left with little bags. Can I take my friend one? Can I take that? I'm like, yeah, yeah, yeah. But they turned out absolutely amazing. Like absolutely amazing. My poor oven, I turned it off a while ago and it's still trying to cool off. It's like, help me, she made so many cookies. But look it, it's amazing. It's so amazing. You know, from Moana, it's so amazing. But they turned out really good. And so I'm excited to share them with the men of our church who are going to be working on Sunday. So I made extra for them. And my kids, I kept telling Robert, let's send some to so He goes, no, no. I go, why are you being so greedy? He's like, mom, they're just so good. <laughs> and they really, really are good. So anyway, thank you for joining me on my first Baking 101 where we made a loaded 
we made loaded peanut butter chocolate chip cookies and they're like a brick like not like hard like a brick but like heavy they're so heavy but they're mm, super yummy so make sure to follow just the bells 10 and look out for our next baking 101 and and comment below what would you like to see me bake i really do want to bake macarons with you and share with you my secret cupcake recipes that i came up with myself i mean Seriously, it took me months of trying different things, different things with my cupcakes to get the, the perfect cupcake and I figured it out. It's absolutely amazing. I'm so proud of myself. But anyway, thank you so much. Follow Just Spells 10. Make these cookies. Let me know what you think. And until then, until we meet again, thank you very much.